it's, it's ironic, but some of the oldest sites out there do really well for SEO because they didn't have any choice, right? Everything had to be in HTML. They didn't have Flash. They didn't have layers. They didn't have even frames, which are also bad. Um, so, you know, old school developers had to sort of rely on, on what they could do with, with basic HTML. So when you're building your sites, some, you know, you can sort of think back to the future with that. This is the issue that you brought up earlier, you know, putting trademark, trademarks in your copy. If you're doing comparative you know, advertising, again, you may be able to get away with it. There's, of course, a big difference between what's legal and what you can get sued on. So just understand those differences. Also, based on uh, which countries you're trying to target, the rules are different. So you can do comparative advertising in the United States, but you can't do comparative advertising in Europe. The HTML is really the, that's the stuff that the spider sees. Um, so you want to make this, the HTML as clear and, and understandable to the search engine spiders as possible. What that means is use your, if you're going to use cascading style sheets, make them external, right? Reference them as external files because that gives less for the search engine spider to have to dig through in the HTML document before it comes to the good stuff. Uh, same thing with JavaScript. There's two ways of running JavaScript on, in an HTML document. You can either put the whole JavaScript right there in the main HTML, or you can take that JavaScript and put it in an external JS file. It's always better to put it in an external JS file because it, it floats the content up higher in, the, in that HTML document. Now, most of the search engines will just skip the JS until it comes to the content, but if you've got lots and lots and lots of it, eventually, you know, a poorly written spider, which there are still some out there, you know, where they it might hit a particular hiccup and not, you know, and get lost basically in the in the jumble of uh, JavaScript. So you can use HTML val validation tools to sort of check to see uh, whether your static or dynamic HTML is is compliant with sort of basic guidelines too. You can see whether or not you might uh, have a, a bug in your HTML that the browser actually renders fine, but the search engine spider might not actually be able to get through it, and that's where those HTML validators come in handy. So this is essentially what HTML looks like. You know, it, it's, it's hypertext markup language, right? And so you can see within there you've got your, you know, your title, your page title, uh, your meta description tag, your meta keywords tag, and then you've got, you know, the beginnings of your, your copy. So this is actually the, you know, the HTML from KevinLee.net, which is my personal uh, homepage. So, you know, you can see, you know, I've put keywords into the title, which I found to be important. I still use the meta description and meta keywords tag because I'm like, what the heck? They're there. Might as well use them. You don't get penalized for them. And a couple of engines may, and again, in a tie environment, they may rely just a little bit on those. But most of them ignore them entirely. So this is essentially what the spider sees, right? Spider comes to the site, it sees this, and it knows how to strip out the things with the brackets around it. It knows where to find the juicy bits that relate to what the content is about. It knows how to dig past that. But you would sometimes find sites where between, you know, the end of the meta area where the, the head finishes and you start to have your body, you, you'll have some, some sites with a lot of JavaScript where there could be hundreds of lines of code, hundreds of lines of text before you get to the body copy. And so taking that and pulling it out into a separate file can be really useful. And yep. will file name and alt tag show up uh, for a spider? Will they read that or will they filter out because they can get it in the source and all? This, you mean? Yeah, if I'm doing a search on Kevin, let's say, is that two more relevant words now? It, it will filter those out. No, it'll, it, it'll slightly impact relevance. It, it tends to I image alt tags, which we'll talk more about later. Um, are more useful to just h help your site come up high for image searches, really, than, than general searches. But again, in a tiebreaker environment, if it gives you like a, an extra 1% more relevance just by being there, and that's all it takes to bring you from position you know, 6 to position 4, that could be pretty dramatic. So it, it's all about sort of breaking the tie, because there's so much content out there about almost everything now that you know, on the surface, everything seems like it's about the same level of relevance. And it's just, it's just these tiebreakers, these little nuances which are the tiebreakers. Um, the other way is, is how to write your copy. Um, folks who, and has anyone ever had to be a journalist, a reporter, anything? 
All right, so you probably remember that in the inverted pyramid style was the concept of, of writing with your juiciest stuff first because the editor might have to cut your story down in length because there may not be room for it. So the idea was if you write an inverted pyramid style, start with your juiciest content first. If we have to cut it short, we won't lose too much. So same thing's true for search, but for a different reason. Because if you start off with, you know, what is this really about? What's the impactful stuff? What is the, the true essence of this page? If you start off with that stuff, that's the first stuff that the engine's going to find. And that's, therefore, the stuff that the engine will decide that page is really about. So again, if you lead in with fluffy stuff, you're sort of wasting, you know, body copy sp space or area around stuff that's fluffy and not really the essence of the page. So if you move to an inverted pyramid um, style of copywriting, you can have a much more powerful page from the pr perspective of organic SEO. And you can usually do that in such a way to also have it be pretty powerful from a, a communications perspective as well. Yep. <clears throat> seeing what we have now in our website, how would you go about seeing what we have now with the folks? Um, I'll, I'll, I guess I could quickly jump to this. I don't know if I'm still online or not. I mean, you can actually go to Google and use a site command, and it'll show you everything that it has on you already, which is you know useful to just not only get a count of how many pages you've got, but it also shows exactly how all those pages are uh, found. So uh, it's site colon. And again, I'll, I'll email all these commands to you if you give me your cards. And it, as I'm going through, I'm thinking about all the stuff I should put on this email that I send out later. But essentially, what, what this is telling us, that there's 524 uh, pages that Google knows about uh, at communitycapital.org. And in no particular order, it's showing those pages. You can actually see, to your point earlier, PDFs are probably pretty heavily represented on your site because there, a lot of these are PDFs, uh, which have been indexed uh, by by Google. You can do the same command in um, in Yahoo, and there's a, there's some slight variations between these commands, but that's a good way to sort of sort of see what they've got on you already. So if if I knew that I had 50,000 pages on my site, and I did this and I came up with 524, I'd be concerned. But if I knew that I had, you know, 600 and I came up with 524, I'd prove pretty psyched, you know. So everything's relative. Now I may not be in there the right way, but at least you got to be in it to win it. So at least the fact that I was in there would would get me, you know, happy or sad depending on my my relative uh, relative numbers. Uh, the body copy, you know, on the page needs to be readable. So. Now, try to start the start the, the body copy with the keywords that really describe what the essence of the page is about. I, when I I don't write as much site copy as I used to, but when I used to write site copy, I used to love to leave a keyword research tool or two keyword research tools open in one browser window, while I had Word or whatever I was using to write the copy open in another window. It allowed me to sort of toggle back and forth. So if I wanted to put, you know, think about well, how are people searching for this thing, you know, what phrases are they using, I, I, I could go type the keyword into the search tool, have it spit back the results, and then I, could, I would try to weave that phraseology into my copy, you know, in a way that made sense, because I, I didn't want to do it in a way that, that you know, somebody reading the copy would say, what was, what was this person thinking? But it's just sometimes very useful. It sort of allows you to peek into the per people's brains who are doing the searching and simultaneously achieve your, your, your communication goal, right, of getting your point across. Yep. <clears throat> well, the, the uh, Shari Thoreau's book actually t spends a lot of time on copy. She's originally a copywriter. There's also a book, which I don't know if it's out yet, um, by uh, Heather Lloyd Martin. And she's also got a searchenginewriting.com is her domain name, so you can go there. Uh, and, and, and read about that as well. And uh, Jill Whalen is another woman who has a site that talks about search engine writing, and that's highrankings.com. Uh, so the, the, you probably don't, you may not need to, well, depending on how into it you want to get, you can buy the book or just find resources online. Uh, you know, th there's, I think, a whole chapter within the uh, search engine positioning book on, on how to write body copy for search. 
Um, if you have words or copy embedded in images, repeat them in the, in, the, in, the, in the copy. So it's not that having the text in the images is inherently evil. It's just to understand that if it's in, if, if your navigational elements are done graphically, and so there's no words. Those are important words about the page, but they don't, they don't exist anywhere in text. You should try to find a way to put them in text so that the engine can understand about that. Um, same thing's true for even, even your brand name, right? The person will use their logo up in the, the upper left corner of the site, and nowhere on the page does it have the name of their company. You know, it's, it's not in the title tag. It's not, in the, any, any, not anywhere. So understand what the engines can read, what they can't read, and just take that into account.